Hello, thank you for stopping by today. This ministry is here to bring the transforming Word of God with power to you. Many today have questions like, who is this Jesus Christ? Is Jesus Christ relevant to my life today? What does it mean to be born again? Is the Bible even real, true, and practical? Who is the Holy Spirit? How can I receive my healing miracles? Are healing and miracles even for us today? By the help of the Holy Spirit, Bishop Adolaju will be answering these and many other questions as he teaches the Word of God. Get ready to be inspired, fed, encouraged, healed, and blessed. And now, here's Bishop for today's message. Thank you, thank you for joining me this morning once again. I'm so excited to bring you another life-changing message of the gospel. Uh, I've been, we've been talking about prison break for the last couple of weeks, and I know that God has been using that message to touch many lives because we've had a lot of feedback from friends and families and people on, on YouTube that have been watching the video. I encourage you to go back to all the old messages and listen because I know God has something for you this year. Before we start, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you because you are the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1.1 1, 1. Without you, we can do nothing. Lord, as we go into your Word this morning, let power, authority, and grace be unleashed. Let revelation flow freely, and let people connect with your Word and receive their miracle today in Jesus' name. At the end of the day, let all the glory be yours. In Jesus' name we pray. I said we are bringing you another exciting message this morning. And I'm so excited because a passage we are going to be looking at is one that you're familiar with. We are going to dive right in. It's in Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. This is Paul. Uh, this is Peter and John at the beautiful gate. And as we read, I'm going to be teaching on the, on the word of God. And then we are going to pray. Because I'm going to see, I'm believing God for a breakthrough to come into your life. Acts chapter 3 verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the night hour. Verse 2. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, this is a problem that followed him from birth, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, beautiful rather, to ask alms of them that enter the temple. Now, this man sits at the gate called beautiful, but there's nothing beautiful about his life. Anything but beautiful. We are going to get into that. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an arm. You guys have been familiar with that. You've seen people, you know, begging and asking for, you know, sustenance on the road. This was this guy's profession. This was his life. This is how he does things. People will bring him and they will put him at the gate. So that people that are going into church, they will ask comes from them. And I think pa pa probably one of the reasons he did that was because it was a lot easier for him to ask alms of people that are going to church because they will be guilty. You know, give him some money. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, look at verse 3. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple? Ask an arm from them. Verse 4. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. I was having this conversation, you know, I've done this, like a family uh, Bible study time with my kids. And I was telling them, do you know why Peter and John said, look on us? Because there's something about high contact. You know, you're looking at me right now, you're seeing me. Uh, you know, when you see people that are asking for money, you try to avoid eye contact with them. Because the moment you, avoid, you make eye contact, you feel the guilt all over. Like, I got to give them something. So that was why Peter did what he did. He said, look on us. So this man, looking at them, the Bible said he was expecting to receive something from them. That makes a lot of sense. So now let's follow. And he gave heed unto them, verse 5, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Wait a minute. So why am I looking at you? Why are you wasting my time? There are other customers that have been passing over the last, you know, one minute, two minutes that you've been staring at me. I could have talked to that guy, that guy over there and that lady that just walked by. Why are you telling me to look at you? And you're saying you have nothing to give me. Peter says silver and gold, money, $50 bill, $1 bill, a quarter. I ain't got nothing to give you. Excuse my French. I don't have anything to give you. He says silver and gold, I have I none. 
but such as I have, give I to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. <laughs> Glory to God. Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but something that I have, I'm going to give you. He said he had it like something you can pull out of his billfold or out of his pocket. And he said it was the name of Jesus. Wait a minute. The name of Jesus belonged to Jesus, right? But the name of Jesus also belonged to you. If you are a child of God, if you have been born again, if you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that name belongs to you. That name belongs to you. I'm going to say it again. That name is something that you own. It's your personal inheritance that you get when you become a child of God. And that's what we are seeing here. Peter said, and then Peter said, verse 6, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now let's, let's move on. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, come on, anybody, somebody say immediately. And immediately, his feet and hanku bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them in the, into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Glory to God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Glory to God. Now, the Bible said... The, Peter and John, when this passage opened, they were going into church at the hour of prayer. So this was not something new. You know, this man has probably seen Peter and John before and a, folk, a couple of other folks. Because the Bible recorded when he came into the church, they recognized him. That's the guy at the gate. Maybe he gave him a quarter the other day or five dollars the next, the, the last time. They recognized him. Maybe they even know him by name. They know where he lives. They have conversations with him. They've seen him. So this is not a, somebody that is a stranger to them. So the Bible said, this man, in verse 2, lame from his mother's womb. This guy had been in prison to this situation from the day he was born. Maybe the situation in your life has been with you from the day you were born. You've been carrying it all your life. It's been part of your family. It's been in your family generation. It's been like a generational curse that has progressed and it's been part of you. It's been normal. It's become something that is normal. You just, you know, kind of learn to live with it. That was the situation of this guy. The Bible said he will hire people, maybe family, maybe relatives, maybe friends. They will bring him daily to the beautiful gate because that's his source of income. To ask for harms, to beg from people, give me some money. Give me some money. That was what he does. That was what he does. Then, this particular day was very different. For some strange reason, God had an appointment with him. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, today is your appointment with God. The Bible says, today is this day of salvation. Every day with God is a day of miracle. A day of signs, a day of wonders. This particular day was his day. The Bible says, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple? You know, you ask yourself, Peter and John, this was not their first time in church. They are children of God. They are, they are leaders in the church after the Lord Jesus left. So this was not their first time. Why didn't Peter and John deal with this, this situation before? Because there's also, I believe, there's an appointment with God. And I believe today is your appointment with God. This man had been in that situation from birth. So this was nothing new. He's learned how to you know, cope with it. He's learned how to manage it. But this situation has gone on for too long. Glory to God. This situation has gone on for too long with this man. So the Bible said he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple. So the natural thing is, give me some money. Brother Peter, Brother John, you know, these are leaders in the church. So he's expecting even better money coming from them. Maybe a higher denomination, a $50 bill, a $100 bill. And then Peter did the unthinkable. Look at us. Give me high contact, dude. Look at me. And then he, he set the expectation so high and then brought him low. 
silver and gold. I'm not going to give you. But I have something better. Glory to God. I have ownership of the name of Jesus. Come on. Something else that the Lord showed me. Now, let's follow this. The Bible said in verse 5, And he gave it unto them, expecting to receive something from them, naturally. Then Peter said, this is Peter now, not Peter and John. Okay, before you start throwing stones, follow me. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, not have we none. He was not talking about we, he was talking about I, Peter. But such as I have, again, singular, I give unto you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Glory to God. So the name of Jesus is something that you own, not something that our church owns, even though that applies, not something that our family owns, even though that applies. You have to see it as something that you own, that it's a personal belonging that you have you know like if you're packing for a trip and you put you know, your luggage you put your shorts you put your uh, clothing you put some other things and then you pack the name of Jesus so when you get to the checking point and they said uh, is all this stuff that's in this bag do they belong to you and you say they are all mine and they say and this one to the name of Jesus yes that's mine that's what I'm talking about. You have to see it that way. That the name of Jesus is something that belongs to you. Then it begins to work for you. Glory to God. So Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus that I own, I'm giving it to you. Rise up and walk. Then he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately, come on, somebody said immediately. Remember we heard suddenly with Paul and Silas. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. Now think about it. This man was born like this. So the feet and the ligament and the, you know, every muscle in the leg, they never grew. They never grew. Have you ever seen somebody that's lame? You see, you know, the, ling the limbs just hanging loose. There's no life in it. They never grew. All of a sudden, the power of God came through the authority in the name of Jesus, went into his body, and restored everything that has held him in prison. So I'm telling you today, God is about to break you out of whatever prison that has held you captive. Maybe it's something that has started with you from the day you were born. This guy never did anything. He never offended anybody. He was born with this. And that's what God is doing today. Every situation that you are born with, that has molested and harassed your life, that has molested and harassed your situation and your family, that has molested and harassed your church, God is losing you today in the name of Jesus. The same power, the same authority that is in that name is coming through the airwaves into your office, into your home, into your life right now and effecting a cure and a release in the mighty name of Jesus. We are going to pray. Are you ready? Are you ready to cut your faith loose? To turn your faith loose? What do you mean by that? That means you, you look unto Jesus. Don't look at me. You look unto the creator. You look unto your master. You look unto your Lord. And you expect to receive. I'm doing what Peter did. He said, look on me. And in this case, I'm saying, look on Jesus. You know, when Peter said, look on me, he was changing his focus away from the money to something else that he could give. But in, in initially, he was expecting money. But the moment he said, silver and gold, I have none, his hope for money went away. Then he was like, so now what? He said, I have something else to give you. It's the name of Jesus. So now, because he's not expecting money anymore, he's able to connect to that new thing that Peter just offered, which is the name of Jesus. And I'm offering that to you today. I'm offering the name of Jesus, the authority in that name. For God has highly exalted him, the scripture records, and has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We are going to pray. Father, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are watching, those who are listening, every situation of life, 
that has molested you either to that has harassed your destiny harassed your family harassed your situation and you 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 don't know a place to to, to turn to and it's like a prison around your life lord i pray in the name of jesus that authority in the name of jesus that rescue this man that is lame at the beautiful gate that rescued him on that day and turn around i don't even know how old this man was 20 30 40 40 years of problem turn around lord i pray in the name of jesus that's that 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 situation that has molested your life, you are loosed in the name of Jesus. The last time we talked about the, wom the woman with the issue of blood, she had the situation for 12 years. 12 years. In her case, uh, we, the Bible didn't tell us that she was born with it because obviously as a baby, you don't issue out blood. And as a woman, you have to become, you have to go into, grow into puberty before that happens. But Lord, I pray, whether it started after you were born or you were born with it, it does not matter. The name of Jesus is not discriminatory. <laughs> the Bible says <laughs> the anointing of God is the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Have you ever watched a movie? They call something heat, heat seeking missile. In other words, when they launch the missile, it's going to look for the hardest thing in that environment. And once it finds it, it's going to hit the target and there will be an explosion. Well, the anointing of God is a yoke-destroying missile. Glory to God. The name of Jesus is looking for the works of the enemy. It's looking for the manifestation of Satan around your life. That's what he does. He goes into your life and he's searching, searching. Once he finds it, it destroys it. Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus for everyone under the sound of my voice that the mighty power of God, the authority in the name of Jesus will come into your situation and loose you from everything that has held you bound in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe you have a situation in your, in your career. Your career is not moving forward. Your health, you are looking for a baby. You are looking to be married. You are looking to advance in life. You are just stuck. Today you become unstuck in the name of Jesus. Today you become unstuck in the name of Jesus. Every chain that has held you bound, that has put you, maybe it's physical, maybe it's psychological, maybe it's emotional, you are loosed in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to tell you I'm so excited because I know something great, something wonderful has happened in your life already. Because God is, like I said in, 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 in the first series, that God is raising a mighty army that is unashamed to share the truth of the word of God. And I know that this has been a blessing to you. And if it's been a blessing to you, I want you to come back because we are going to be, you know, pumping out messages. Glory to God. We are going to be releasing the anointing and the power of God as the Lord leads us. And I want you to subscribe to our channel. Because I, you know, we want to grow this. We want to tell your friends, tell your people in your church, because God is doing something amazing. And if God is laying it in your heart and you have a church, maybe your pastor, tell them about this ministry. We are open to invitations. And I know that God is going to do mighty miracles in your life. And you might ask, what, what has God done for me? What has God done for me personally, Bishop? I have many, many testimonies. Uh, by the grace of God, as the Lord gives me the opportunity, I'm going to share some of them. Uh, one that is particularly powerful, I'm going to be posting the link on this. You know, the 700 Club actually did a story on my second daughter and the miracle that God did for us. So I know what I'm talking about. I've experienced it up close and personal. This Jesus is not just a book. It's not just a book that you read, but he's alive. Glory to God. And he's ready to help you. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being with us for today's broadcast. We believe this message has been a blessing to you. Don't forget to visit our website, BICConline.org, for more resources like books, videos, blogs, free gospel tracks, and more. We also invite you to subscribe to our social media feeds to get up-to-date messages, blogs, and upcoming event information from this ministry. Until our next broadcast, remember, God loves you with an everlasting love. Jesus is Lord, and He is your healer.